Good morning, church. Another Sunday, you know, to worship the Lord in this manner. The Lord has been faithful. The Lord has been faithful. Hallelujah. That's the, you know, only word I can say. Yes, He's been gracious, but He's been faithfully gracious. Yes, He's been loving. He's been faithfully loving. Amen. Hallelujah. He never, ever failed us in all these days. And another day to worship God in this manner. So let us join you know, in this worship, in our spirit. Yes, we are separated in different places. We are separated but not secluded. Please understand. You and I, we are separated right now, but we are one in the spirit. We are one in the spirit. And let us come together in prayer and, and praise and let's worship the Lord. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for another opportunity for us to come to your presence. Lord, it is a joy and a privilege for us, Lord, every time for us to come to this holy presence of yours. Lord, once we were alienated from the very camp of your people. Hallelujah. Lord, we were ostracized. We were outcasts. But Lord, you, gave, you brought us near, near to your temple, near to your house. And not only near to your house, Lord, you rent the way, veil for us so that we can enter into you, the Holy of Holies boldly, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for that grace. Thank you for what you did on the cross of Calvary so that we, even I, can have access to that presence. Hallelujah. Master, cleanse us. Cleanser, just because you gave access to us, we cannot come just the way we are, Father. Yes, we came once before salvation, but now once we are saved, help us to come approach your presence with holiness, with sanctification, Father. Hallelujah. I pray that as we sing, as we worship, as we read the Psalms, I pray everything will be a pleasing aroma. Let it be a sacrifice to you. Hallelujah. We bring sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. I pray that there will be oneness. There will be one accord in this particular service. And I pray that through this service that you will answer your people. I pray that, Lord, who is waiting for a miracle in their life will experience their miracle. Hallelujah. Experience a supernatural power in their life. We love you. We exalt you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In times of despair, in times of loneliness, Lord, you are my strength. This is our prayer. This is what we want to confess right now in this service. Join us in this particular song. Amen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us continue to worship this God, this Almighty God, in the reading of Psalms. I would like to request Shreya to come and re- lead us in the Psalm reading today. Psalm 138, the Lord's goodness to the faithful. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. I will worship toward your holy Holy temple temple and and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly. But the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Hallelujah. David says, Lord, do not forsake the work of your hand. You know, we are made you know, by his own hand. Amen. Hallelujah. From the dust of the earth, God created man. Amen. And, and there's a beautiful verse in this particular psalm. Verse 6. Though the Lord is on high, you know, but yet, you know what? Yet he regards, he has regard for the lowly. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's continue to worship him. Um, these days, we never thought that you know we'll be facing these days and we never thought that you know we will survive all these days when we turn back and look into these four to five months we see that god has been faithful faithful a lot of people had problems in their job but god really protected them especially in the beginning stage people had to go out when everyone was shut in you know our people had to go out and work every day but our god protected them There are many things we need to remember and praise God. So let us remember all the blessings he has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Let's praise him. Amen.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us have Christ in the center of our life. Let him be the focus of our life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. every breath you have given us Lord we are here to praise you hallelujah master you've been faithful to us though many times we didn't deserve we were so unworthy we've been so faithful we thank you we praise you Lord 
we are in need of your touch we are in need of your word lord we are in need of your deliverance lord we look up to you bless your people touch your people speak to your people be an answer to the questions lord we have we love you lord we give you all the glory honor and praise in jesus name we pray amen amen god bless you praise the lord church let us look to the word of god for god's guidance as we have started the series of um, receiving miracle from god and i've been as last week i started on this particular subject your miracle is in your obedience your miracle is in your obedience before we go any further let us look to the lord in prayer we have worshiped god today we have magnified his name and we need his touch we need his divine touch in our life let us submit ourselves afresh heavenly father we once again come into your presence in jesus name thank you for accepting our worship thank you for being with us thus far even at these times hallelujah master today i pray that you would bless your word i pray that lord that this word will be blessed by you broken and distributed so that we all can be blessed we all can be filled hallelujah lord one touch will make the difference one word will make the difference lord one look can make the difference hallelujah lord speak that word speak that rhema word today hallelujah let your people experience a supernatural experience a miracle hallelujah lord last week we saw that miracle is something normal to you master normal it's not an extraordinary work and i pray that that you will do the the miracle in your people's lives hide me and reveal yourself hallelujah we bind the strong man in jesus name we give you all the glory honor and praise in jesus name we pray amen 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 <clears throat> by the way you know me standing here is the grace of god it is a miracle it's another miracle and the god has really given me the strength to stand you know in, in front of you in the presence of god well let us go to the word of god last week we saw that you know man's expectation on god is you know for the supernatural for the uh, for the sustenance and for the sympathy we expect god you know for the miracle for the maintenance and for the mercy you know that's you know that's where you know we see god you know we go we see god for the supernatural everything all the other things you know we can take care we can take care amen and especially you know we really want god to perform the miracle of course god has promised that he will perform the miracle of course god will do the extraordinary thing but at the same time the bible very clearly says that every you know promise has got a prerequisite every promise has got a prerequisite and if you fulfill the promise yes you prerequisite you will experience the promise in your life amen hallelujah and we also saw last week that our god is a god of miracles and the miracle we see you know you have to understand that you know miracle is something supernatural supernatural that is extraordinary and we also saw that you know the natural which we look around the nature which we look around is actually the miracle of the past miracle of the past sometimes you know we get accustomed to certain conditions and we forget that it is a miracle you being alive is a miracle you 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 walking in a, in insanity you walking in strength is a miracle i need to understand that you know every day in my life it is a miracle and once i understand and cherish the daily miracles in my life yes the lord will continue to do the supernatural thing amen hallelujah and we saw uh, in the life of naaman that he experienced the supernatural he experienced a miracle by obedience and the thing that stopped naaman was his pride pride literally stopped his miracle you know pride literally stopped him from obeying and please don't allow your pride to stop your miracle please don't allow your pride pride almost stopped Naaman's miracle almost stopped Naaman's miracle amen hallelujah this morning let us look into another miracle <coughs> in the word of god amen hallelujah this particular incident we see in the book of john gospel of john is a very unique gospel that's why you know the rest of the gospels are called synonym in a synoptic gospel they are synonymous they are together but john stands unique john stands separate 
Hallelujah. It was the last gospel written. And by the way, John was very close to Jesus. He was the beloved disciple. Amen. Hallelujah. And here we see, um, we don't see the Christmas message as we read in, in Matthew or Luke. Uh, Mark completely avoids the Christmas message, but John does write about the Christmas message in a different way. John very clearly mentions about the pre-existence of Christ. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. So even before the Word came into this world, the Word was there. The pre-existence of Christ is mentioned. And the gospel message, the Christmas message of John is, the Word became flesh. The audible became tangible. The far became near. Hallelujah. He became Emmanuel. Amen. So John is very unique in presenting, you know, this particular gospel. In John's gospel, you see that a lot of unique stuff we see. Nathaniel's incident, you see only in John, in chapter 1. In chapter 2, we read about the wedding at Cana. It is only in John. Chapter 3, we read about Nicodemus and this particular character we read only in John. Chapter 4, we read about the Samaritan woman, again, only in John. Chapter 5, we read about the, the, the miracle at Bethesda. Uh, and this again, we read only in John. Chapter 6, you know, he reveals himself as the living bread. And this is one incident which is common in all four Gospels where he, Jesus feeds the 5,000 plus. Amen. And coming to chapter 7, we read about the, the, the Holy Spirit in the Feast of Tabernacles. That's we, that we read in, only in John. Chapter 8, we read about, you know, Jesus, you know, freeing this adulterous woman, the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. And this we read only in John. Chapter 9, we read about a blind man being healed. You know, this particular blind man, we read only in John. Amen. Chapter 10, we read about, read, read about the good shepherd. Jesus as the good shepherd, only in John. Chapter 11, you know, about Lazarus, so on and so forth. John is very unique in his presentation. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Coming to this uh, particular morning's passage, let us, you know, turn to John chapter 9, verse 1 through 7. John chapter 9, verse 1 through 7. So this morning I want to draw your attention to this particular passage. It's a very interesting passage. And by the way, you know, this particular miracle... This particular miracle, John sets aside about 41 verses. Sets aside this entire chapter. You know, we have seen so many miracles Jesus performed. And every miracle will have, you know, one or two verses. You know, certain says, you know, uh, he just uh, performed miracles there. Just one verse will be there. There are two, three verse miracles and maybe ten maximum. Here, 41 verses he, John sets aside to this particular passage. We are not going to, going to read the all 41 verses, but let us read from 1 to 7. John chapter 9, verse 1 through 7. I pray that this morning the Spirit of God will speak to you in a unique way from this familiar passage. Amen. Let now, us read. as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he has said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Amen. So he went back, he came back seeing. He came back seeing. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the most common miracles Jesus performed 2,000 years ago when he lived in, this face of the, in the face of the earth was he gave sight to the blind. It's a very symbolic miracle. It's a very symbolic miracle. He gave sight to the blind. Giving sight to the blind is one of the most common miracles Jesus performed. Amen. Hallelujah. We see in, in Matthew chapter 9, you know, two blind men were, they received sight. In, in, um, again, in chapter 15, we read about, you know, when he was feeding the 4,000, again, a lot of, you know, they were blind who received sight. Amen. Mark chapter 8, we read about a guy at Bethsaida. He received sight. And um, 
again, we did in Mark chapter 10, we did about the uh, Bartimaeus in, in Jericho, he received sight. And John chapter 9, another blind guy received sight. So, giving sight to the blind is one of the main, you know, miracles Jesus performed. I say one of the main miracles because, you know, when, when John the Baptist was in prison and he was, he actually had a doubt about Christ. And when he asked this question, Jesus, you know, sends a reply. He said, go tell this to John. And he says, you know what, you want to know whether I'm Christ and this is the proof. And let's read it. Mark, Matthew chapter 11, verse 5. Matthew chapter 11, verse 5. The blind received their the sight. The blind received the sight. And the lame walk. And the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. Amen. And so Jesus gives a list of miracles he performed to give, him, to give us a proof of his calling. And the first thing that comes as a proof of his ministry is the blind see. The blind see. So this is a very, you know, phenomenal miracle. It's a, it's a very, you know, important miracle. It's a very significant miracle. It's not just giving sight, physical vision. It is that to give us vision to our inner man. To our inner man. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So there are three main people who receive sight. Three main miracles which is mentioned, you know, in an elaborate way. Amen. It's quite narrated in the Gospels. You know, we know the story of Bartimaeus and how he received sight. Amen. Then we also see the Bethsaida guy who received sight in, in Mark chapter 8. We read about this particular story. Now, blindness, blindness, you have to understand. Being blind is very sad. There are other illness, there are other deformities. You know, people are lame, people are deaf, people are dumb. And uh, blindness is something, it's very sad. It's very sad because you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. A lame guy, he can see others walk and he knows what he's missing. He knows what he's lacking. A blind man, he doesn't know what he doesn't know. A deaf person, you know, can be, you know, somehow deafness can be compensated. You know, we see that partially deaf, deaf people are, are literally, you know, they're, they're taught to speak. They understand. And through speech therapy, we see that deaf people can speak. They can speak. You know, recently I, I heard one of, the one of her beautiful um, presentation on America's Got Talent. A girl who's completely deaf, a completely deaf person, you know, she plays the guitar and sings. You know, this is possible, this is possible. Beethoven, he comp composed the Ninth Symphony when he was completely deaf, completely deaf. But when it comes to blindness, oh, it's a different story. I've never seen a blind person paint a picture. I've seen a deaf person sing. But I haven't seen a blind man paint a picture. The pathetic situation of the blind person is he doesn't know what he doesn't know. Amen. Hallelujah. That's really sad. But Jesus came to give enlightenment. Jesus came to give us light. Hallelujah. A lot of people talk about enlightenment. A lot of people talk about, you know, getting, you know, do this yoga, do this and that and do, go stand, sit in this place. You know, go to this place, you'll get enlightened. I'm telling you, they are fooling around. They don't know what real light is because these are the blind leading the blind. These are blind people leading the blind. Now let me, you know, I pray that this morning God will give you enlightenment. God will reveal certain things. God will open your eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sadly, a lot of people are blind intellectually. That's why most of the educational you know, institutions have a light as their symbol. Most of the education system, you know, schools or colleges will have light as the emblem because education gives light to people. A lot of people are blind intellectually. A lot of people blind relationally. That's why you have a lot of relational problems. A lot of people are blind politically. That's why, you know, again and again, people vote for the wrong person. People vote for real thugs. Because I'm sorry, people are blind. 
If only people can see, they would realize, you know, we won't be making this mistake again and again. All over the world, you know, people make this mistake because people are blind politically. People are blind. Amen. People are blind spiritually. People are blind spiritually. A lot of people, they are blind. They think they are spiritual. A lot of people talk about, you know, being spiritual. I'm sorry, you are blind. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And even, I see a lot of Christians are blind scripturally. Scripturally, we are so blind because so many times we read the Bible, we don't see, we don't get it, we don't understand. Blindness, blindness, blindness is something very sad. Amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blindness, you know, is a, um, blindness is of different kind. There are different kinds of blindness. Some can't see, which is far. They can only, they are, they are short-sighted. They can only see which is close by. Something far, they cannot see. That is also a blindness. Some can't see when things are close. They can only see out there. They can't see their own mistakes. They can't see their own faults. They can only see others' mistakes. They are also blind. They are also blind. Some people have center blindness. They can't focus on things. That's a kind of blindness. They can see everywhere outside. They can't focus on a particular thing. Center blindness is there. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people have blindness in the evening. Amen. When the evening comes, that's it. You know, they can, they, they can see only for, for some time. When there is a lot of light, you know, they will see. When after, after some time, they become blind. Amen. Some people are colorblind. They can't differentiate. They can't differentiate between one to another. They, you know, sadly, some people are colorblind. Some people have cataract. Cataract is a blindness where your flesh comes and, you know, blocks your vision. There are different kinds of blindness, different kinds of... I don't have time to explain all these things. And I pray the Spirit of God will reveal, you know, these blindness, what to make you understand about these blindness. There are more blindness if a person sees a powerful light, huh, they become blind. You, become, you, you, you are blind when you see a lot of light. You, you are blind when you, see, when you have no light. See, you have to understand, you know, blindness is of different kinds. We can be blind in different ways, different ways. More light, you become blind. No light, you become blind. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, even a person with 20-20 vision, perfect vision, we are blind spots. There are blind areas in our life. Amen. Yeah, all, of you, all of us are blind. You know, when backside, we are blind. We are blind when we are diverted, when we are distracted. Hallelujah. There are different ways, you know, we get blind. Church, please understand. That's exactly what the enemy does. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Whose mind the God of this age has blinded. Whose mind, please listen carefully. So the area where the enemy wants to blind us is in our mind. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Has blinded. Has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel, light of good news. Somehow the enemy brings this blindness in our mind. Once you're blinded in your mind, I'm sorry, even if you can see, you cannot see. Even if you hear, you cannot hear. That's why, you know, the enemy blinds us in our mind. Church, this morning I pray that, you know, the Spirit of God will help us to see, help us to realize what the real message is. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John, here in this particular incident, he dedicates about 41 verses you know, to, for, for this particular miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. It's, it's a very interesting miracle. It's a very special miracle. It's a very special miracle. Well, um, let us look into this particular passage. Let's turn to um, John chapter 9 verse 1. Now, as Jesus passed by, Amen. he saw a man who was, born, uh, was now, that's blind enough. That's from enough, birth. Ma. That's enough. Now, when Jesus passed, passed by. by, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, <coughs> for me, 
this is good enough. This first three words is when Jesus passed. But this incident took place in Jerusalem. This incident took place in Jerusalem. You have to understand that is a, you know, the Bible says, no other miracle, you know, you see, read about this, like this. That Jesus performed this miracle as now when Jesus passed by. Now as Jesus passed by. Now, why did the Spirit of God mention it this particular way? Now, for us to understand, we need to look into the background. We need to, when you really look into the background, you know, it really amazed me. It really amazed me. What a wonderful God we have. What, what a wonderful God you and I have. Actually, the background goes to chapter 7. John chapter 7, we read about, you know, Jesus was there in his hometown in Galilee. And it was uh, during the time of Feast of Tabernacles. Everyone went to Jerusalem. Jesus stayed and his brothers are mocking at him. Come on, man. If you want to perform a miracle, why stay here? Go to the public places. Go to Jerusalem. Go there, you know, and perform. You know, literally they were mocking at Jesus. And he stayed and suddenly he left for Jerusalem. Because at the time he came to Jerusalem, it was about the end of the feast. At the end of the feast, you see that Jesus you know, calls out and, and tells about the, the Holy Spirit. If anyone is stirred, you know, out of him the rivers of living water will flow. And then, you know, towards the end of the uh, chapter 7, you know, there's an argument with the people of Jews, Israel in the temple. And, and, uh, and because of that, you know, heated argument, you know, that's how chapter 7 ends. And they're all upset and they went home, the Bible says, in chapter 7. And chapter 8, again, you know, it starts with, uh, at the te place at the temple, morning everyone brings a woman in the act of adultery, and they are all ready to stone her. They are all they are all ready, ready to s with stones. And by the way, if you read the entire chapter ten, you know that why they had the stones with them, not to stone that woman. It was actually to stone Jesus. So that's that incident happened again. There is another heated argument in chapter eight. And uh, this time, you know, Nicodemus comes in and for the rescue, he says, you know, why, don't get upset. Let us listen to him. You know, let, it, let, let us listen to what he says. Because the entire temple people, the Pharisees, all the scribes, they were all upset. And let us go to chapter 8, verse 58 and 59. John chapter 8, 58 and 59. Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to uh -huh. you, before Abraham was, I am. Uh -huh. Then they took up stones. To then they took him. up stones. You know, they had these stones not to stone the woman. They brought the stones to stone Jesus. They took the stones to throw then at him. They took, the, took up stones to throw at him. Uh -huh. but Jesus hid himself. Jesus and went hid himself and went out of the temple. And went out of the temple. Going through the midst of them. Going and so through the by. midst of them and, and so, so passed by. by. Now, as Jesus passed by. Hallelujah. So, this is what it means, you know. Here, literally, you know, I'm, I'm, I won't hesitate to say that literally Jesus is fleeing. Because John says that he hid himself. He hides himself and he literally flees from the place. He is passing by at this juncture. Amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. He is there to perform a miracle. No wonder he is the lamb that takes away all the sins of this world. No wonder, you know, he died for the sins of mankind. He is fleeing from a threat. He is fleeing from a threat. He is passing by. And so as he passed by, he is concerned over a blind man. He is concerned over a blind man. Hallelujah. This morning, you know, we have a God. You have a God who cares for you even when he goes through trouble sometimes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No wonder, you know, he saw you and me. You know, when he was at the cross and the Bible says in Hebrews that he saw you and me as joy that was set before him. Amen. Hallelujah. No wonder even at the cross he could say, Father, Father, forgive them. Because this is the God, you know, I'm here to preach about this morning. This is a God. He didn't have a, a, you know, jaywalk. He didn't have a cool walk. No, 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 no. Please understand. This, he was hastening from the temple. He was leaving. The Bible says, you know what? And thus he passed by. He left. He hid 
himself from the people. They were about to stone him. This is not the time for a miracle. This is not the time to help for another person. I'm sorry, you know what? If someone, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm busy. I'm sorry, I need help. I'm sorry, I don't have time for you. But Jesus had a time to heal the person. Even when he was threatened. When even when he was chased. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, this morning we need to understand. This is a God, you know, we have as our God. Aren't we special? You are someone special because you have such a wonderful God who's willing to help you even, you know, in these times. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's read this verse again. Verse 1. Now, as Jesus passed by. Now, in this condition, you know, please understand, it was Jesus, when he passed by, you know, he doesn't go uh, without a purpose. John chapter 4, we read that, you know, he had to go to Samaria because it was not an accident. Every place he goes, there is a plan and a purpose. There's a reason. The, 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 the widow at Cain, um, um, the nine. wedding at... Na, wedding at and, Cain. Uh, no, no, no. The, um, the widow at nine. I'm sorry. The widow at nine. You know, her son was dead and Jesus is there, right there at the right time to help her. Amen. The miracle at Jericho, we know that, you know, he went through Jericho on the road because on the road he had to meet Zacchaeus and, and Bartimaeus. We all know that. But here we see that this is a journey which is called fleeing. It's of haste. Amen. Hallelujah. Even at that time, even at that time, we see this Jesus performing this miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw. Amen. Hallelujah. They say, I'm sorry I was in a hurry. I didn't notice. I'm sorry I was busy. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was in a haste. I'm sorry. I, 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 forgive me. But here is a person who is in a haste but sees things, wow, so clearly. So clearly. Amen. Let's read verse 1 again. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who he was saw blind. A man who was blind who was from birth. Born blind. Now I can understand if Jesus says, Jesus saw a man who was blind. I can see, you know, I can understand. If Jesus saw even when he was hurrying, you know, most of us will miss, but Jesus was able to see. He was see, he was able to see this guy who was blind. But he sees something very special, very unique. In his vision, what he sees was, he sees that the origin of his problem, the background of his problem, hallelujah, anyone can see that he is blind. Anyone can see he is blind, but we are all blind to see from whence that blindness he has. We are all blind to see that. We are all blind to see the background of the problem. Anyone can see that he's blind. But Jesus, even in that hurry, he was able to see that this guy, you know, had a problem from the very beginning. From birth, he had this problem. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said this way, any fool can count how many seeds are in an apple. Only God can say how many apples are in a seed. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a God who can see even in darkness. Psalm 139 verse 12, you know, it says that, you know, he, for him darkness is as light. In Job we read that, that death is naked before God. Amen. Daniel says that he knows what lies in darkness. We have a God who sees everything. Everything is crystal clear before God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the story gets, you know, you know, gets interesting in verse 2. Let's turn to verse 2. And his disciples asked him, saying... And his disciples asked him, saying... Rabbi, Rabbi who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something very interesting. Uh, something very stupid. Something very common. Amen. Hallelujah. Here we see that a question is being asked. A question is being... Questions are asked mainly for two reasons. Questions are asked for one. Number one, for someone to know, they ask a question. 
I ask a question because I don't, I need to know, I want to know. That's why I ask this question. We learn by asking questions. That's why we need to encourage children to ask questions. You know, that's how they learn. Don't hush the child. It, you know, children, have, they have a question for every answer you give. They answer because they are in the age of learning. You know, in order to learn, in order to know, one has to ask a question. And secondly, a question is asked to know whether you know. <coughs> I know the answer. I want to know whether you know the answer. So I'm asking you this question. Amen. Hallelujah. So these are the main reasons people ask a question. Now let us come to this. Let's read verse 2 again. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned? And the disciple asked him, saying, saying, Rabbi, mm -hmm. who sinned? This man or his who parents? Sinned? <clears throat> who sinned? Uh -huh. This man or his For parents? For this man to be born blind. So this question, <clears throat> ironically, you have to understand, it starts with a conclusion. This question, in order to know, starts with a conclusion. They have concluded that this is because someone has sinned. Amen. And secondly, what we see is they have asked this question to know something and they are giving two options. Two options. Is it his sin or his parents' sin? Hallelujah. Sadly, this is the mistake we do, church. My friend, this is the mistake we do. We have framed the unknown. We have framed the unknown. Think if you can. We have framed the... That's the mistake we do. We have even the unknown, we have put them in a frame. We have boxed the unknown. We have defined the unknown. We have put God in a frame. Evolution is a conclusion of the unknown. Let me say it again. The theory of evolution is a conclusion of the unknown. I'm, I'm not educated. I'm not, I'm not really wise. But this I know well, for, for sure. This is a conclusion of the unknown. Conclusion of the unknown. Think about how dumb it is for you to conclude the unknown. How dumb it is for you to frame the unknown, to box the unknown. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, you know, you, you have the right to not, not to know, but never frame the unknown. You know, to put God in an idol is framing the unknown. How can you put God in a picture or an idol? How can you do that? I don't care what religion, even Christians do that. Once you believe in a God, God belongs to the unknown. God belongs to the infinity. God belongs to the immortal. Hallelujah. How then can you frame this unknown? We all make this mistake. We all are blind in this way. You think that this guy is blind? You know, the entire, all the society, we are all blind because we frame the unknown. We frame the unknown. This morning I pray that God will open our eyes for you to realize, stop framing the unknown. Because that's the first step for you to know things. The moment you put limitation, the moment you put box, the moment you put frame, my goodness, you know, to the unknown, you're making a mistake. There is something which is beyond. Hallelujah. When Manu asks God's name, you know, what's, what's your name? Why do you ask my name? My name is beyond comprehension. The, the, I let the literal translate. It's not wonderful. It's, it's beyond understanding. <coughs> His name is beyond understanding. Let, let, let us understand that. Let us understand that He is beyond understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And here they ask this dumb question. Dumb question because you know what? Sometimes they said, you know what? This, if he is facing this, this is because of sin. Who said it's because of sin? Many a times we go through pain, suffering, not because of sin. Mephibosheth was lame. You know, it was not his mistake. It was absolutely not his mistake. But we see that Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, he is lame because someone else's mistake. 
Elisha, the man who had the double portion from God, you know, he died of illness. Whose sin was it? You, you want to accuse Elisha of, of sinning? He's a man with double portion. He died of illness, a man of God, the prophet of God, who performed double the miracles of Elijah. So this morning, let us stop framing the unknown. <coughs> let us stop concluding things about the unknown. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, will you please be open because God is about to perform a miracle in your life. What stops the miracle is, please understand, we have framed God. We have framed, you know, theology. We have framed this, everything. We have made it into a two-year course, three-year course. And we say, oh, I've read the Bible. I've, I've read the Bible. You read the Bible ten times. You think that, you know, I'm sorry. You're making a mistake. You read a zillion times, but still, you know, this is a book to be known, revealed. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Never frame the unknown. Never frame the unknown. Now, they are asking this question. Now, for him to, this guy to be in this condition. Now, what do you think, Lord? I don't know, but I, that's what I think it is. If you don't know, why do you think? Just shut up. Stop thinking. Stop thinking. Be willing to listen to him. Lord, speak for your servant is there to listen. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, Jesus gives a beautiful reply. Let's read verse 3. Jesus answered. Jesus answered. Neither this man nor his parents. They gave two said, options. And Jesus said. Neither, neither of the above. Hallelujah. You think that the answer is within this? Choose. In, give two. Choose. No, no, no. Jesus said. No, neither. Neither. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful answer. You think the answer is in this frame? No. It's outside. It's beyond because God is beyond. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, go ahead, Ma. <coughs> but that the works of God should be revealed in him. The works of God? Works. Works of God? Should be revealed in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Revealed <coughs> in him and through him. What is revelation? Getting sight. Hallelujah. In other words, this guy is blind so that you all can see. Hallelujah. In fact, you know what? You know, there's a purpose of his blindness. This guy has been blind, is born blind, so that, hey, you dumb guy, you can see. Peter, you can see. John, you can see. You know, Thomas, so that you can see he is blind. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, please understand. You know, so that God can help you to receive your miracle so that you can See, you can see, hallelujah. That's why the enemy is, you know, bringing this blindness in our mind. Enemy is bringing blindness in us. Today, I see a lot of wise people, a lot of people who are educated. Sadly, you know, they are blind. They've got these blind spots in their life. Blind spots. You know, we all have blind spots, but I don't want to have a blind spot in the right spot. I don't want to be blind in the right areas in my life. I don't want to be blind at the right moment, junctures in my life. Hallelujah. If I'm blind in an empty road, it's okay. It's okay. If I am to be suddenly, you know, blind for a second, a fraction of a second, in a nanosecond, especially when there is another vehicle which is speeding, coming close, I don't want to be blind at that time. I don't want to be blind. Hallelujah. I know that I'm blind in so many ways, but I'm so thankful to God because He has revealed and He is revealing about Himself and the Word every day. Amen. Hallelujah. Church this morning, you know, let us learn a secret to receive our miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. This enemy is there to take your eyes. That's exactly what he did to Samson. Samson, the strong man, he to be bound. The best way to be bound is make him blind. If you can blind him, you can bind him. If you can blind him, you can bind him. If he can blind you, he can bind you. Hallelujah. Church, that's what, you know, a strong horse is blinded. And that's how you, you harness a horse. That's how you use a horse. Amen. It, it, you can only see a particular place. Partially it is blinded. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. And finally Jesus says, you know what? This is for the glory of God. Amen. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. And this miracle is unique in many ways. This miracle is unique in many ways. Bartimaeus, you know what? When Jesus came to that place, and the, the guy at Bethsaida, let me start with this blind guy. <coughs> this, they bring this guy to Jesus. And we see that a group of people brought him to Jesus. So before taking him to Jesus, they would have given an introduction. I, I'm going to take you to Jesus. Who's, he doesn't know who Jesus is, this blind guy. And, and uh, see, Jesus, he's a good guy. He has performed many miracles. You know, he has, he has healed many people. Even lepers have been healed. And, and they, they introduce, they build it up, and they bring him to Jesus. And Jesus, I want you to heal this guy. And Jesus takes him by the hand and takes him outside the town. And we know the story. Bartimaeus, you know, he's asking, what is happening? I see a lot of crowd. I hear, I hear a lot of crowd. What is it? They say, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He says, hey, you dumb guy. He's not Jesus of Nazareth. He's Jesus the Messiah. He's Jesus the Messiah. The guy at Bethsaida, he knew, he knew, Bethesda, he knew about Jesus. People taught him about Jesus. Bartimaeus knew about Jesus. But this guy, he knew nothing about Jesus. <coughs> Church, please, sir, he knew nothing about Jesus. Amen, hallelujah. He did not know Jesus. No one brought him to Jesus. No one brought him to Jesus. And he didn't ask for healing. He did not ask for healing. It's a very unique miracle. It's a very unique miracle. Then how did he get healed? When was he healed? This is a big question. Let's read verse, you know, um, three, uh, four. I must work the works of him who uh -huh. sent me mm -hmm. while it is day. The night is coming when one, no one can work. Uh -huh. As long as I am in this My next world, verse, next verse, ma. When he had said these things, uh -huh. he spat on the ground. He and spat made on the ground. Clay and made clay with the saliva. Made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man. Anointed the eyes the of clay. the blind man. With the clay. Church, I want to tell you this morning that this guy was not healed in the presence of Jesus. This guy was not healed. He did not receive his healing at the presence of Jesus, in the presence of Jesus. And he did not receive his healing when Jesus touched his eyes. <coughs> the Bible says he anointed his eyes. Did he receive sight? No. Nope. Amen. Hallelujah. But he was healed by the act of his obedience. He was healed by the act of his obedience. This morning, church, this is what exactly I want to share with you, emphasize with you. Your healing is in your obedience. Verse 7, Jesus says, go wash. Go wash. Let's read verse 7. And Jesus said to him, hmm. go wash in the pool of Siloam. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. Mm -hmm. So he went and washed. And so he went and washed. And came back seeing. And came back seeing. Hallelujah. Church, are you willing to obey? Are you willing to obey? Not knowing things completely. If you should ask him, who is Jesus? He will say, I'm sorry. I'm blind. I can't see. I don't know. No one, you know, taught me about Jesus. No one educated me about Jesus. He's not like Bartimaeus who had a pre-knowledge of Jesus. No, no, no. He did not have the knowledge of Jesus. And yet, he obeyed. Amen. Hallelujah. And he obeyed Jesus. You have to understand that the entire conversation is happening about him without even his concurrence, his knowledge. But he was willing to obey. Amen. Hallelujah. And then he was willing to go see. He had this faith walk. In, in other words, he literally you know, walk, walked blindly. He literally walked blindly. He literally believed blindly. This was completely, it was a blind belief, blind faith, blind obedience. Can you completely obey God even without <coughs> understanding things completely? Can you? My friend, this morning, you know, your miracle is in your obedience. If you want to wait to get all the knowledge, you'll miss out on the obedience. You'll miss out on your miracle. You'll miss out on the supernatural touch of God in your life. 
Just this morning, God wants to, you know, bring a healing in your life. Do a miracle in your life. But that depends on your obedience. This guy was willing to obey, even without knowing Jesus completely. That's why we read about 41 verses in this particular um, incident. Because after receiving sight, he gradually gets to know about this Jesus. And go home, you know, read this passage, entire chapter. You know, God will open your eyes in many ways. He doesn't know Jesus much, but he's ready to obey. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He was willing to obey. I have to understand, we have to understand that every step he took was a step of faith. Every step he took was a step of faith. Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, when you don't, don't know things clearly, when your way is not clear, you go by what you hear. When your way is not clear, you go by what you hear. That's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing the word. Not by seeing, but by hearing. This is what the word says. This is what God speaks to me. And I, I'm willing to obey whatever he says. Hallelujah. That's exactly what he did. I don't know how many times he faltered. How many times he fell. But he just you know, went on. He just continued his walk of faith. And by the way, you know, in Jerusalem, in that city, there are two pools mentioned. And John chapter 5, we read about a Bethesda, Bethesda pool. And this is a pool which is near Sheep Gate. Now, right next to the temple is a pool. And Jesus did not send him to that pool. Pool of Siloam is quite under. You need to walk, you know, a few steps, you know, a few, you know, it's quite a distance from the temple. And this guy was sent to that particular place. You know, it makes sense because this particular pool, a lot of sick people will be there because that's a pool to be healed. That's your logic says. That's what your mind says. That's, that's what the popular, you know, that's the popular, popular notion. But this guy was not willing to go according to the popular notion. He was willing to obey the word of God. Because these are the things which stops your, stop your, stop your obedience. Many a times, you know, we want to obey, but public opinions, eh, opinion something different. A lot of people say, my friend said another thing. My experience says another thing. For Naaman, his pride almost stopped his obedience. For this guy, he was blind. He's blind. He, have, he has all the reasons for him not to obey. But this guy, he decided to obey. Hallelujah. Can you obey? His word blindly. <clears throat> Can you obey? Take your steps in obedience. Sometimes it might be quite far. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you obey? Even if you should falter, can you continue to obey? Because your miracle is in your obedience. And the Bible says, he went and washed and he came back seeing. Now, the guy at Bethesda, you know, Bethesda, he, when he received sight, he saw people. This guy, when he received sight, guess whom he saw? He goes to the pool, he washes, he washes his eyes again and again. There's a lot of mud already. And he sees something. It's hazy. After a while, he sees something. He sees his own image. And the, by the way, Bible says, Jesus says what? Go. Go. Wash. wash. <laughs> Go wash. And I'm sure that that's what he did. Go wash your eyes. Did Jesus say, go wash your eyes? No, 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 no. No. Because I'm sure because when he came back, when he came back to the very same place, people could not recognize him. Why? He washed himself. Hallelujah. Because when I'm blind, I can't see the dirt in my face. I can't see the dirt in my, in my forehead. I can't see my hair being unkept. I can't see my filthy clothes. Because the moment I see, I can see myself, I will make myself clean. So the Bible, you know, people there, they had a doubt. Is this the guy? Or oh, he looks like him. Why? He looked different because he had a different 
image about himself oh hallelujah this miracle you know went a long way that's why you have 41 verses for this miracle it doesn't end in verse 7 he came back saying he came as a different person church i want to end this message but i want to tell you your miracle is in your obedience jesus even when he was fleeing from a place he was willing to heal this person because he is this is the 11th hour in the heavens clock this is the 11th hour we all should understand that but even now god wants to perform a miracle in your life god wants to do the supernatural in your life hallelujah hallelujah don't miss out on this don't miss out on this putting god in a frame putting you know the conditions in a frame please don't do that don't put the unknown in a frame if you don't know just keep it as the unknown just say lord i don't know i'm willing to learn please teach me speak to me i will listen just be willing to obey blindly whatever this word says be willing to obey hallelujah if you believe if you can obey your miracle is in your obedience shall we close our eyes and pray <clears throat> heavenly father i've sown this living seed lord in people's lives master i pray that that every enemy every spirit would stops them from obeying what they need to obey i pray that lord that will be nullified in jesus name and as they obey i pray that lord father that you would perform the miracle that they will experience the miracle in their life hallelujah hallelujah all they need to know is lord they need to have a willing heart to obey even without knowing you completely this guy obeyed and he got the miracle master help us to do that help us to do that lord give us a heart which is conducive which is yielding to obey your word bless your people master in jesus name we pray amen amen god bless you god bless you